today we are going to discuss the resonant cavity resonant cavities laser or optic oscillator so we are going to talk about you see the construction of the resonant cavity and the ampl the amplification of the light signal that takes place in the resonant cavity this resonant cavity is also known as laser so uh, we so basically we will be talking about the uh, structure of the laser the amplification of the light signal in the laser and this resonant cavity is also known as optic oscillator so uh, this uh, resonant cavity is in the form of a cylinder as shown in this figure and it consists of an amplifying medium this medium is known as amplifying medium because the light signal will be amplified in this particular medium this uh, light signal will be amplified inside the cylinder so it consists of an amplifying medium and two end mirrors so you guys you guys can see mirror number one on this side of the laser and you guys can see mirror number two on this side of the laser so here is mirror number one this is mirror number one and here is mirror number two uh, the length of uh, the cylinder or the length of the laser is represented uh, by l so l represents the length of this cylinder l represents the length of this amplifying medium and uh, the length of the cylinder extends from z is equal to 0 to z is equal to l so basically we consider z axis in the direction of the arrow so i am going to show you another diagram of uh, this resonant cavity uh, let us consider another diagram of the resonant cavity over here uh, this is the same resonant cavity which consists of an amplifying medium and two end mirrors uh, you guys can see mirror number one on this side of uh, the laser and mirror number two on this side of the laser so uh, you see let us consider the previous diagram uh, you see in the previous diagram uh, this is the incident wave so the incident wave is traveling along positive z axis this is the incident wave which is traveling along positive z axis so uh, the total internal reflection of the incident wave will take place at mirror number two why because uh, uh, this mirror behaves like a perfect conductor uh, you see uh, as a perfect conductor uh, reflects the electromagnetic wave in the backward direction there is total internal reflection uh, in case of uh, the conductor uh, so similarly uh, the, the light signal will be reflected back to the amplifying medium by bearer number two uh, no energy of uh, this incident wave will penetrate to the mirror so the light signal will be reflected back to the same medium and you guys can see the reflected signal over here the reflected signal uh, travels in the uh, negative z axis uh, along negative z axis so we design this laser in such a way that uh, the constructive interference of the incident wave and the reflected wave will take place in this particular medium and uh, the signal will be amplified so the signal the light signal uh, will be amplified inside the cylinder 
due to the constructive interference. So let me show the constructive interference uh, with the help of the phasor diagram. So uh, let me show you the constructive interference with the help of this particular diagram. This is the incident, you see, this is the incident wave which travels along positive z-axis towards mirror number 2. So at mirror number 2, uh, this incident wave uh, is reflected back towards uh, mirror number 1. So this is the reflected wave. And you see the incident wave and the reflected wave are in phase. So as these two signals are in phase, the constructive interference will take place and due to the constructive interference uh, the light signal will be amplified inside this uh, resonant cavity. So we design this resonant cavity laser or optic oscillator in such a way that uh, uh, you see the constructive interference of the incident wave and the reflected wave will take place inside this amplifying medium and the light signal is amplified by uh, this uh, uh, amplifier the light signal is amplified by this amplifying medium now uh, we consider uh, another diagram over here which is very uh, important so let us consider this particular diagram you see uh, in this particular diagram you guys can see the resonant cavity over here which is in the form of a cylinder. Uh, here is x-axis uh, and this x-axis is a tangential to the cross-sectional area of the cylinder. Uh, x-axis is tangential to uh, the, the cross-sectional area of the cylinder. Uh, in other words, it is tangential to uh, the interface uh, between uh, the cylinder and um, the, the mirrors. So uh, this here is your x-axis. Here is our x-axis which is tangential to the interface. Similarly, here is our z-axis which is tangential to uh, the interface as well. So x-axis and y-axis are tangential to uh, the cross-sectional area of uh, uh, this uh, uh, cylindrical structure uh, to the cross-sectional area of this resonant cavity. And the only coordinate which is normal to the cross-sectional area of the resonant cavity is uh, z-axis. So z-axis is normal to the cross-sectional area of uh, this uh, uh, cylinder. Uh, it is normal to the cross-sectional area of this resonant cavity. So there are two waves in uh, the there are two waves uh, in the cylinder there are two waves in the resonant cavity one is the incident wave and the other one is reflected wave and we designed this cylinder in such a way that the constructive interference of the incident wave and the reflected wave of the light signals will take place and uh, uh, the, due to the interference, the signal will be amplified. So we will obtain an amplified light signal inside this particular cylinder. And then the output signal uh, is obtained from this end of the cylinder. Uh, so uh, we make an arrangement like this and we can obtain the uh, the, the uh, amplified signal from this resonant cavity we obtain uh, the amplified signal from this laser we uh, obtain the amplified signal from this optic oscillator so let us consider uh, the mathematical equations of these two waves uh, inside this cylinder we consider the electric field intensity of the incident wave and the electric field intensity of the reflected wave and as the constructive interference of these two waves take place uh, takes place inside the amplifying medium of the cylinder so uh, we will find out the total intensity and the total intensity 
inside the amplifying medium of this optic oscillator, this resonant cavity will be equal to the phasor sum of the incident wave and the reflected wave. As you see, the incident wave is traveling along positive z-axis and the reflected wave travels along negative z-axis. So we consider uh, the electric field intensity of the incident wave in phasor form. So uh, let us consider the, uh, the, the phasor value of the electric field intensity of the incident wave. So we consider the incident wave and here is the phasor value of the uh, electric field intensity of the incident wave. We assume that the medium uh, inside this amplifying cylinder is a lossless uh, medium. Uh, we assume that this medium is a lossless medium. So uh, if this is a lossless medium, so we consider the equation of the electric field intensity uh, in the phasor form in a lossless medium. So is the incident wave uh, is moving along positive z-axis, so the electric field intensity of the incident wave uh, will be equal to E naught, where E naught is the amplitude of uh, this electric field intensity. E naught is the amplitude of the electric field intensity of the incident wave. So the electric field intensity of the incident wave will be equal to E naught into E raised to power minus JKZ. This minus sign indicates that the incident wave is moving along positive Z axis. So the minus sign indicates that the incident wave is moving along positive Z axis inside this resonant cavity. Now we consider the electric field intensity of the reflected wave. So the electric field intensity of the reflected wave will be equal to rho E naught into E raised to power JKZ multiplied by the unit vector AX. So AX is the unit vector uh, which gives you the direction of the electric field intensity. So we assume that the electric field intensity is along X axis. The electric field intensity is tangential to uh, the cross-sectional area of the cylinder, right? So uh, we uh, consider the direction of this vector quantity uh, along X axis. So uh, you see uh, the electric field intensity of the reflected wave in phasor form is equal to rho E naught into E raised to power JKZ multiplied by AX. We have a positive sign over here and the positive sign indicates that the reflected wave uh, travels along negative Z axis. Right? So this wave will uh, move back and forth uh, in, the, um, in the cylinder in the amplifying medium and as I have mentioned it earlier that we design this cylinder in such a way that the constructive interference of the incident wave and the reflected wave will take place inside the cylinder and the cylinder will give you an amplified light signal. Rho uh, in this uh, equation number two is known as the reflection coefficient. We call it the coefficient of reflection. So rho is uh, the reflection coefficient. But in this particular case, mirror number two behaves like a perfect conductor. No energy of the incident wave will, uh, will, will move inside the mirror. The total energy will be reflected back to the cylinder. It will be reflected back to the amplifying medium. So rho in this particular case will be equal to minus one. So is uh, uh, the, the total energy of the incident wave is reflected back. So the coefficient of reflection in this particular case is minus one. And we put the value of rho in equation number two and we obtain equation number three. So the phasor value of the electric field intensity of the reflected wave will be equal to minus E naught into E raised to power JKZ 
multiplied by the unit vector ax the unit vector ax gives you the direction of this vector quantity we know that electric field intensity is a vector quantity and the direction of this vector quantity uh, is along x axis in this particular case so we assume that this vector is along x axis this is our assumption now uh, the constructive interference of these two uh, signals will take place uh, inside the amplifying medium so let us calculate the total electric field intensity uh, inside the amplifying medium of this resonant cavity so the total electric field intensity inside this uh, amplifying resonant medium will be equal to the phasor sum of the electric field intensity of the incident wave and the electric field intensity of the reflected wave so we take the phasor sum of the incident and the reflected wave and it results in the total electric field intensity of the light wave inside the amplifying medium inside uh, the cylinder inside the resonant cavity so the phasor value of the electric field intensity will be equal to uh, e naught into e raised to power minus j k z minus e naught into uh, into e raised to power j k z uh, multiplied by the unit vector a x and we know that z in this particular case uh, changes from zero to l so z which gives you the length of the cylinder is changing from zero to l so what we do uh, we consider the total uh, electric field intensity near mirror number two where z is equal to l so let us calculate the total electric field intensity near mirror number two where z is equal to l and l is basically the total length of the cylinder so if we put the value of z in this particular equation uh, we get the total intensity of the light wave inside the amplifying medium and the total intensity uh, of the light wave inside this amplifying medium will be equal to e naught into e raised to power minus j k l minus e raised to power j k l and definitely this total intensity will be in the direction of the unit vector a x well uh, we know that sine theta is always equal to e raised to power j theta uh, minus e raised to power minus j theta divided by 2j so what we do we multiply and divide this equation by 2j so let us multiply uh, uh, let us multiply the right hand side of uh, this particular equation uh, let us multiply and divide the right hand side of uh, this equation by 2j so uh, if we uh, multiply and divide both sides of this equation by 2j we get the total electric field intensity inside the amplifying medium and the total uh, electric field intensity inside the amplifying medium will be equal to minus j 2e naught into e raised to power j k l minus e raised to power minus j k l divided by 2 j multiplied by the unit vector a x and we know that uh, this quantity uh, gives you sine of k l so if we simplify the first equation of this slide we get the total electric field intensity inside the amplifying medium uh, we represent 2 e naught in this equation by e1 where e1 is the amplitude of the total electric field intensity in medium number one so the total electric field intensity the phasor value of the total uh, the the uh, the phasor value uh, of the um, total electric field intensity in medium number one will be equal to minus j e1 into sine of kl multiplied by the unit vector ax right so this is the total electric field intensity uh, in the amplifying medium near mirror number two keep it in your mind that this is the value of the total electric field intensity 
head z is equal to l and uh, which is uh, near mirror number two so this is the total electric field intensity uh, in the amplifying medium near mirror number two and we represent this electric field intensity uh, with the help of e1 so now we apply we apply the boundary condition before the amplification of uh, the uh, boundary condition we consider mirror number two so we have mirror number two over here let's say this is mirror number two so uh, let me draw it once again let's say uh, this is mirror number two so uh, I represent this mirror number two by m2 so uh, you see uh, there are two uh, uh, you see uh, the media there are uh, two, this there are two media in this particular case on this side uh, we have the cylinder and uh, on this side we have the mirror and uh, uh, you see the mirror behaves like a perfect conductor uh, for the light signal so uh, the, the the incident signal is 100% reflected back no energy penetrates to the mirror so you see this is the interface uh, between the cylinder and the mirror and uh, you see the electric field intensity inside mirror number two will be equal to zero because when the incident wave reach here mirror number two a hundred percent of the energy is reflected back and uh, uh, no energy um, is transmitted to mirror number two so the total electric field intensity of uh, the light wave inside mirror number two will be equal to zero now what we do we apply the boundary condition and the boundary condition states that whenever a wave travels from one medium to another medium its tangential component does not change uh, however its normal component if any changes so whenever a wave travels from one medium to another medium the tangential component of the electric field intensity of the wave does not change so we consider the wave inside the amplifying medium and we consider the wave inside mirror number two we know that there is a wave inside the amplifying medium but there is no wave inside mirror number two right so we apply the boundary condition over here so uh, you see the electric field intensity in the amplifying medium is along x axis so uh, the electric field intensity in the amplifying medium is tangential to the interface and we consider the component of the electric field intensity which is tangential to the interface so we consider e1 e1 is entirely tangential to the interface between the cylinder and mirror number two so e1 in this particular case will be equal to et2 r e2 which is the electric field intensity in uh, the mirror number two but uh, there is no electric field intensity in mirror number two we know that the electric field intensity in mirror number two is zero so if the electric field intensity in, 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 in mirror number two is zero e1 will be equal to zero so we obtain this particular equation with the help of boundary condition let me revise let me repeat the statement of uh, the boundary condition for you guys the boundary condition state that whenever a wave travels from one medium to another medium the tangential component of the wave does not change uh, however its normal component changes in this particular case uh, e1 is the electric field intensity uh, of the light wave near the interface uh, the interface between mirror number two and the cylinder and e1 is entirely tangential to the interface so according to the boundary condition e1 will be equal to e2 but e2 which represents the light wave in the mirror there will be no light wave in the mirror so e2 will be equal to zero and we obtain uh, this particular equation with the help of boundary condition it means that the total electric field intensity uh, near mirror number two inside the cylinder will be equal to zero and we consider the value of e1 in the next slide 
So this means that uh, if we consider the value of E1, it means that E1 uh, into where is E1? It is in equation number 5. So this is E1. Oh, -ho, this is E1. So we consider equation number 5 as E1 is equal to 0. So it means that E1 into sine of KL will be equal to 0. We just put the value of E1 on the left hand side of uh, the previous equation. And you see uh, E1 represents the amplitude of uh, the electric field intensity which is not equal to 0 uh, uh, but uh, uh, sine of KL will be equal to 0. So equation number 5 uh, says that sine of it says that sine of KL will be equal to 0 and sine of KL will be equal to 0 if KL is equal to 0 pi 2 pi 3 pi and 4 pi. So sine of KL will be equal to 0 at uh, the mentioned values of KL. When KL is 0, sine of KL will be equal to 0. When KL is pi, uh, sine of KL will be equal to 0. When KL is 2 pi, sine of KL will be equal to 0. So uh, uh, in other words, we can say that sine of KL will be equal to 0 if KL is equal to m pi where m is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So as I have mentioned earlier that sine of KL will be equal to 0 if KL is equal to pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi and so on. So in general we can say that sine of KL will be equal to 0 if KL is equal to m pi where m is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. We know that the uh, propagation constant uh, will be equal to the propagation constant k will be equal to 2 pi by lambda. So we put the value of k in equation number 6. So let us put the value of k in equation number 6. Uh, here is the value of k. So we have 2 pi by lambda multiplied by L which is equal to m pi and the length of the cylinder must be equal to m lambda by 2. So we calculate the length of the amplifying cylinder uh, with the help of this particular equation. We calculate the length of the cylinder uh, the, uh, with the help of this particular equation and what is uh, the cylinder? Cylinder is basically a resonant cavity in this particular case. Uh, it is a laser in this particular case. Uh, it is an optic oscillator in this particular case. So we calculate the length of the resonant cavity with the help of this particular equation right so uh, let us uh, consider uh, another uh, equation uh, we simplify uh, the encircled equation of this particular side and we get the value of lambda so the uh, resonance will take place inside this uh, a resonant cavity at uh, these values of lambda when lambda is equal to 2L by M where M is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on so uh, if the value of the wavelength of the light uh, of the light signal inside this amplifying medium is equal to 2L divided by M then the amplification of the light signal will take place inside this resonant cavity. So we need to satisfy uh, these values of wavelengths uh, inside the amplifying medium of the resonant cavity. We know that lambda is equal to V by F and V is equal to C by N. So if we put the value of V in uh, lambda so lambda will be equal to C, uh, lambda will be equal to C divided by N F, right? If I put the value of E uh, in the value of lambda over here, I will get lambda is equal to C N F. And what I do, I put the value of lambda over here. So this means that uh, 2L divided by M will be equal to C 
divided by 2 n f and we calculate the value of uh, f from here we calculate the value of the resonant frequency from here so uh, if we put the value of lambda in this particular equation we get the values of the resonant frequency so uh, this is the value of the resonant frequency the resonant frequency will be equal to mc divided by 2 n l so uh, uh, at these values of the frequencies of the light signal the resonance will take place inside the uh, amplifying medium the signal will be amplified you guys will obtain an amplified signal from the laser uh, which is known as a cavity resonator as well and optic oscillator so uh, this is how we calculate the resonant frequency and this is not a single frequency uh, we get you see multiple frequencies by the way when m is equal to 1 f1 will be equal to c by 2 and l uh, when uh, um, m is equal to 2 then we will get c by nl and so on so let me consider the values uh, of this frequency when m is equal to 1 so when m is equal to 1 uh, f1 will be equal to c by 2 n l and when m is equal to 2 then f2 will be equal to c by uh, n l and we calculate you see the gap between these two consecutive frequencies which is represented by delta fc so you see f1 is c by 2 n l and f2 is c by n l so let us calculate uh, delta f the gap between uh, these two uh, frequencies so the gap between these two frequencies uh, which is represented by delta fc will be equal to c by 2 ln so delta f in this particular case will be equal to f2 minus f1 and f2 is c by ln and uh, f1 is c by 2 ln if we simplify uh, this uh, equation we get equation number 3.25 so this is the gap between uh, the two uh, resonant frequencies it means that f2 will be equal to f1 plus delta fc right similarly f3 will be equal to f2 plus delta fc and so on so we can calculate you see uh, multiple resonant frequencies uh, inside you see this particular amplifying cylinder the amplification will take place at these resonant frequencies so you see uh, this is uh, one resonant frequency this is another resonant frequency another resonant frequency another resonant frequency and the gap between the two consecutive resonant frequencies is given by c divided by 2 ln this is a very important equation uh, we will do a numerical question uh, with the help of this particular equation as well okay so uh, this is how the amplification of the light signal uh, take place uh, inside uh, the uh, resonant cavity uh, which is known which is known as laser as well as uh, uh, um, cavity oscill uh, optic oscillator right so let us consider example number 3.1 what i do i consider the the uh, data in example number 3.1 so the wavelength of the light signal is 0 0.82 so you see lambda uh, in the first part of this particular example is 0 0.82 and uh, delta lambda is 20 nanometer 
So delta lambda is equal to 20 nanometer in the first part, right? So and the length of uh, the path is 10 kilometer. So L in this particular case is 10 uh, kilometer, right? So in the first part of example number 3.1, <coughs> we want to find out the amount of pulse spread, uh, which is represented by uh, delta T, okay? So we need to calculate, you see, uh, delta T in this particular case, uh, if the center wavelength is 0 0.82 micrometer and uh, delta lambda is 20 nanometer, right? Okay, so uh, what we do, uh, we consider uh, the equation for the pulse spread per unit length. We know that uh, we have delta T by L, this is the pulse spread per unit length, which is equal to minus M multiplied by delta lambda, right? So this is how we calculate the pulse spread per unit length. So we will use this particular equation to calculate, you see, the pulse spread. And as uh, lambda uh, is uh, uh, less than uh, 1200 nanometer, this is 800 nanometer. So we will use uh, the book in the graph to calculate uh, the uh, coefficient of um, material dispersion. So we need to find out M in this particular case uh, from the graph which is in the book. So let us consider the graph first, right? So this is the graph. You see, well, uh, the wavelength is 0 0.82, right? Here is the wavelength. Let me consider it again. Here is the wavelength. So let us calculate the value of M which corresponds to 0 0.82 uh, micrometer. So we consider the graph on this side and you see uh, uh, if I consider uh, the graph on this side so here is one let me uh, show it to you guys I am going to show you the value show 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 you the value of M in this particular graph. So this is uh, uh, the value of M which corresponds to this particular wavelength and this particular wavelength is almost 0 0.82 micrometer. So the value of uh, M in this particular case is uh, 110 picosecond uh, divided by nanometer into kilometer. Uh, this is uh, the unit of uh, the uh, coefficient of material dispersion. Okay. So what I do uh, I consider the equation for uh, the pulse spread per unit length. So let me consider the equation once again for you guys. We have the pulse spread per unit length which will be equal to minus m multiplied by delta lambda. Right? This is lambda. So uh, m is known which is 110. So what we do, and delta lambda is known, which is 20 by the way. So delta lambda in this particular case is 12. So we put the values in this particular equation. So the pulse spread per unit length, we ignore the minus sign, you see. Um, we just calculate the absolute value of the pulse spread. So M in this particular case is 110. And uh, uh, the pulse spread in this particular case is 20. So the pulse spread per unit length in uh, this particular path will be 2.2 nanosecond per kilometer. So as uh, the length of uh, the information channel, the length of the optical fiber is 10 kilometer. So uh, we know that the pulse spread, the total pulse spread will be equal to uh, the pulse spread per unit length, per unit length multiplied by the length of the optical fiber. This is pulse spread per unit length multiplied by the length. So we multiply the pulse spread per unit length by 10 
and we get the total uh, spread in this particular case. So the total spread is 22 nano second, right? So this much pulse spread will take place in this particular case. Now we consider the second power of uh, this example. Uh, the second power of this uh, numerical example says uh, a re a repeat. Okay, it is over here. A repeat if lambda is 1.5 and delta lambda is uh, 50 nanometer. So uh, you see, as uh, lambda is uh, greater than 1200 nanometer. So we will use uh, 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 we will use the equation to find out the value of uh, m. Uh, we, uh, if you guys remember, we discussed. We have already discussed. You see uh, the uh, coefficient for material disper dispersion in the previous classes. So if lambda is uh, greater than 1200 nanometer, less than 1600 nanometer, we will use an equation to find out this value of m. So we calculate m with the help of, you see, this particular equation. So uh, you see m will be equal to m naught divided by 4 um, into lambda minus lambda naught raised to power 4 by lambda raised to power 3. So let me show you that the value of m naught in this particular equation will be minus 0.095, right? And uh, this is 0 0.095. And lambda naught is 1300 uh, nanometer. And uh, lambda, uh, well, if I consider the value of lambda, so the value of lambda is uh, 1500 nanometer okay so please consider the values in nanometer put all these values in this particular equation uh, if we uh, put these values uh, in the in the equation of this particular slide so we get the value of m m comes out to be uh, 15 you see this is the value of m so again we use this particular equation the pulse spread the pulse spread per unit length will be equal to uh, minus m multiplied by delta lambda so m in this particular case is 15 and let me show you what is the value of delta lambda uh, delta lambda in this particular case is 50 so uh, it will be equal to 15 multiplied by 50 so uh, let me erase the right hand side of this particular equation and let me put the values so m in this particular case is 15 and delta lambda in this particular case is 50 so the pulse spread per unit length in particular case is 750. So we go to this line and you see the pulse spread per unit length in this particular case is 750 picosecond per kilometer. As uh, the length of uh, the information channel is, is 10, uh, if we multiply the pulse spread per unit length, which is... Uh, 750 picoseconds per kilometer uh, multiplied by uh, 10 which is the length so we get 7500 7, picoseconds in other words uh, it will be equal to uh, 7.5 nanosecond so the total pulse spread will be equal to 7.5 nanosecond uh, well i will do uh, more numerical example in the upcoming class. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless you.